Boost on little else and rewards offered for good behaviour. That's what a report has suggested. The study by the policy exchange think tank says litter in the UK has soared since the 1960s and costs the UK an estimated £500 million a year to clean up. It recommends creating a national body for anti-litter projects as well as a deposit scheme for bottles and cans. Well, we're going to have a discussion about litter now with Phil Barton, chief executive of... Uh, Keep Britain tidy. He's with us here in the studio. And Mark Banks, Waste Strategy Manager for Westminster City Council. He's in our central London studio. Evening to both of you. Um, first of all, to you, Phil Barton. Um, just talk to us about the problem of litter. Is it a question of fines, imposing fines that are already there? Can you stop people's dropping litter just through fines? Uh, not just through fines, although fines and, and enforcement are really important part of the strategy. Uh, and, and policy exchange are right that it, it is still uh, very um, variable across the country how much of that is done. But we need personal responsibility, we need education and campaigns, and of course we need really good management of our local streets and, and parks and the local areas mm. to clean up what is there, because there's lots and lots of evidence that litter uh, gathers more litter and so it, so you get a vicious circle. Um, Mark Banks uh, from Westminster City Council, uh, are you imposing fines enough do you think? Well, we know the fines are there but I mean how often are fines actually being meted out to people? For dropping litter not particularly of very often, to be perfectly honest, we're not very keen on finding people for dropping litter in any instance whatsoever. We'd much rather educate them and just point out to do the right thing. Well, that sounds great, but I mean, we've had anti-litter campaigns for years and years and years, and it doesn't seem that a lot of people really take very much notice. I think the problem is people don't think about litter at all. So what we try to do is to try and raise awareness by just making sure that there are enough litter bins around and people can always see where litter should go. Um, Phil Barton, are there enough litter bins around? Isn't that one of the problems, that sometimes people do want to put it in a bin, but actually it's not that easy? C certainly there are problems and there are, there are parts of the country where there aren't enough litter bins. On the other hand, litter bins which aren't properly managed and emptied regularly are worse than having none at all. So if you have overflowing litter bins, then it will encourage more uh, antisocial activity in that vicinity. So we do encourage more litter bins, but... Uh, and particularly with the smoking ban, then, then sort of particular bins for uh, cigarette ends and so on, really important. But it has to be as part of a strategy. I mean, Mark Banks, aren't we being a little bit gentle when we talk about re-education and so on? I mean, it, clearly, in a lot of cases, it just doesn't work. What about just much bigger fines that would really frighten people off and definitely imposing them whenever litter is dropped? I think in most circumstances, people are just deeply embarrassed as soon as they find that, that they've been talk to about dropping litter so they will pick it up and take it away again things do change a bit more during the night time when people are a bit less inhibited perhaps but again we'd much rather go down the the education route rather than enforcement which we use as a last resort only I mean Phil Barton isn't one of the problems that I mean I, I think I read seven out of ten cases of dropping litter it's dropped out of a car so it's actually even if you want to impose a fine even if you're, a, I don't know, a policeman on the street and you see it, it's not that easy. No, getting, getting evidence is, is one of the major, major challenges that we have. But it's not true to say that, that everybody is, is evil. And, and, and actually, there's a huge amount of, of support and goodwill. Uh, we're launching later this month, uh, we're launching the Big Tidy Up, uh, which encourages and supports community groups to actually take action locally. Uh, we're, we're working with businesses to do that. And we, we have huge responses. So whilst there, is a mi there are a minority of people who do litter regularly and there are many more who litter occasionally actually an awful lot of the population is very well behaved and in many instances uh, our streets are getting cleaner so it's a complicated story but actually let's go back to Mark Banks because I mean Westminster quite often you walk around areas of your council and the streets are, are filthy I mean you, what can you do to try and improve that I think that's quite an unfair assessment, to be perfectly honest. Um, we have more than 800 staff out 24-7 each day cleaning litter from the streets. Um, we have just announced plans earlier this week to introduce another 1,000 litter bins. We're very hopeful of winning Britain's Cleaner City Awards later on this week as well. We're previous winners. We put an enormous amount of effort into managing the litter produced by the million people within the heart of London each day.
and in Westminster's defence, they have huge numbers of people tracking through the, the town centre, the city centre of London, uh, all the time, and, and they do do a really good job. That doesn't mean it's perfect, and, and if you go around England, you'll find all sorts of situations where there are problems, but the local authorities on the whole uh, have improved significantly in their response, their management of their local street scene services, and it's not all gloom and doom, but policy exchange, absolutely right, we all need to do more. Okay, Phil Barn and Mark Banks, many thanks for both of you. We'll all do more. Now, uh, let's join Nick Miller for the weather. Hi, Nick. Thanks, Joanna. Hello. Some of us will.